Hi everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe. Happy New Year to everybody. Let's pray for a great 21. Please stay safe, be healthy, and let's crack on. This is part three of Build the Interstellar Ranger. Uh, to catch some of you up who may not have seen the two previous episodes, this is a kit that came out several years ago. And I've built it a couple of times, but as I've mentioned in previous episodes, I've given them away and I don't have one for my collection, so I thought it was time to do it. And I thought, why not build it on camera within reason? So that's what we've been doing. Uh, we've been uh, cleaning it up, we put in some photo etch, we talked about priming it, and um, today, I'd like to sort of catch you up to exactly where I am and where you should be on your model if you're following along with me. And so let's, let's dive in. Um, so what I've done is uh, I have obviously put in the louvers on the bottom here. They are very, very delicate. In, in, in fact, uh, I've left one op uh, closed, I should say, uh, uh, for you just to see uh, what, what would happen to it um, if it gets pushed in and you've got to just sort of gently push them out be very careful um, and they will as you can see push out now if for some reason uh, it snaps off which it could do um, and you'll see uh, I've actually deliberately scratched one here so that you can see what happens don't panic just try to uh, get it into position don't force it if it doesn't want to go, but uh, just a little more CA and that will pop back into place. And, and, th and that should be fine. So, um, and what you can do is you can take a little bit of, of um, your black paint here, black Vallejo, I've got, I'm using Vallejo paints, and just uh, give this a little, little touch up. Now, None of this has been protected yet with a coat of varnish. Um, you're going to want to do that. And the reason why you're going to want to, to seal in your paints, and, and, and most of you know this, is if you don't seal them in, they're going to scratch. And um, you can certainly continue painting over the varnish. You have to make sure that you're not cross-contaminating your um, your finishes, your varnishes. So make sure that you've got compatible varnishes with compatible paint. If you're using acrylics, make sure something is safe on acrylic. If you're not sure, test it on a piece of plastic before you test it on your model. Uh, always sound advice. And um, I tell you now because in the past I didn't think about those kinds of things. But anyway, here we are. The louvers are in. And as I mentioned last time, when the model is completely closed up, you, even though I've um, tinted the windows, and we'll get to that in a minute, um, you're going to see through I I into this and you'll see daylight out the back. That doesn't make any sense to me. So what I did was I cut a little piece of screen. Here it is. And uh, that lays over the model like such. And then I cut a piece of card, uh, painted it black, as you can see. And that will lay over that like that and then I'm going to seal that up with uh, a hot glue. Um, but let's take a look at this and I'm going to use fill can to get you a little closer here because I think it's fun and um, you can see uh, the result is quite is quite dramatic. So here it is and um, now bear in mind that th this is going to get uh, some some light dusting of uh, some whites and some creams and some pastels. We're going to go through all of that for the weathering stage. But I just like the idea of seeing something behind these lovers. It's it's kind of gritty and it and it looks kind of cool. And uh, as I've said, I cannot take credit for that. I have to give credit to Lou Del Masso. Now uh, I don't know whether he got it from somewhere else, but um, he's a wonderful model maker and is a true inspiration to me and that's where I got that from and it works really well. So we're going to seal that in place. Now he uses JB Weld. I, I personally think it's overkill, but I'm sure he's right. But anyway, I'm going to use a hot gun and we'll seal that down. Now, 
As you can see, this piece of card is white. The reason why I left it white is to remind me that we needed a floor panel. Just because when you look inside, I didn't want to see uh, this, any remnants of this uh, contaminating it. Now, we've not built an interior. Some guys build um, a little bit of an interior. Some guys like the interiors. Some guys put some extra panel lines down just to give you a little hint. But I don't think it's necessary here. Uh, uh, the reason being is because I've got double tinted windows and I think, um, or at least when I've tested it, um, it looks pretty good. So what we'll do is we'll get all of this glued down. Um, we've also, we've also pre-painted the rear legs. Uh, we've left the feet off because you can't get the foot through the opening, so you've got to leave them off. I've painted the interior of the cowling here with... I'm just putting uh, fill cam on for you. Um, I've painted the interior with some gun metal. Now this is going to get um, some dry brushing. Um, and uh, we're going to do some scorching and do some other things uh, later on. But it's got a basic gun metal, which gives it a little bit of a metal sheen in the light. Uh, and that's the base coat for the legs. And I'm going to install these. And I'm also going to install uh, a, a burn plate. I'm calling it a burn plate that sits in the back here. A little burn plate on both sides uh, that I painted black will glue that in and that's what the engines will slip into but the reason why we've done all of this guys is so that we can seal it up and start um, really uh, start focusing on getting this to start to look like the Ranger it should so uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is the window tinting. Now what I did was I went and ordered online. Now I found this for nine bucks on Amazon and it's window tinting. Uh, I don't know if it's for cars but I suppose you could use it in a car. It's probably the cheapest one on the market since it was only eight bucks but it has a sticky back to it and uh, it adheres to it adheres to the plastic that Paul from Paragraphics kindly gives you with the kit. Now this has protective fo uh, uh, covering on it in case you wanted to leave these clear or just smoke them. As I said in my previous episode, I don't recommend smoking them with Tamiya smoke because if you get any kind of schmutz on it or streakiness to it, I, have a having, I just have a difficult time with it and I don't think it, it looks great. So what I did was, was I took the, the film, I laid it over plastic, over the plastic, um, on both sides. And uh, now it's got a little bit of uh, bubbles that you have to get out, but they do come out. And uh, once you've got that to where you like it, uh, cut the pieces to match your window openings, which is what I've done. Uh, then you can lay them in and I'm hot gluing mine in and they won't move because it's all plastic and it's very, very light. So that's what we're doing there. So we will have the windows, the tinted windows in and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like on Philcam because I think it's actually kind of fun. Here we go. You can see these are the windows that I've, I, I've put in. Now the light is really... Uh, showing you every little uh, bubble and, and, and crack, but I promise you um, to the naked eye, you just can't see it. That's uh, one of the things with cameras that I am not a big fan of, but hey. But if you want to brush it off or you think you've got some schmutz on it, this is a dust, uh, it's called a dust pen. It's usually for camera lenses and makeup artists use them as well. I recommend you have one on your bench. Um, you don't want to be wiping or blowing because you never know. Even your saliva might stain uh, uh, paint. So I use one of these and it gets all the schmutz off and uh, there you go. So we will, uh, we will get all this glued in right now. You don't need to watch me use uh, a glue gun. You know how to do that. But we're going to get all that prepped. We'll get this sealed up. 
and then we'll start talking about the next step, which is uh, to get the, the first round of paint on this. Oh, before I, uh, before I move on, I just wanted to say, you'll notice I've painted the entire thing black. There's a, re there's a reason for that. And I know sometimes you can pre-shade and then you can lay down your whites, but if you've looked at the space shuttle, which is white, and it uh, even the production models of this kit um, um, f that we use for filming, there's a sort of fabric on the outside. I think it, it's meant to be heat shields, obviously, that asbestos or some kind of a fire retardant uh, uh, blanket that, that goes over this. And so you really want this to look a little roughed up. I'm, I'm going to finish this as if it has been flying through space. Uh, and so it's going to get pitted and, and dirtied up. It's going to be great fun. But that's the reason why I painted it black, is so that when I start to bring the whites into this, they're going to take on that kind of dirty look to them. And you're going to need to obviously lay down several um, uh, layers of that, but we'll get to that um, in a bit when we, uh, when we carry on. So that is, that is where we are. Um, I'm going to jump ahead and... Uh, We'll we'll take it from we'll we'll take it from there. Okay. So through the miracle of television, uh, what took me several hours uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, I didn't work on it full time, so don't worry. It didn't take two hours to seal it up. But it uh, it was it was um, a challenge. Um, here it is. Uh, all the windows are in, as you can see. Make sure we're on the, uh, yeah, there. Windows are in. I'll give you a little look on uh, Phil Cam. And uh, here it is. And uh, looking quite nifty. Uh, really happy with the back, the way the back turned out. Um, that looks good. The rear legs are in. Everything is on. The back is on. And uh, she's looking uh, quite black, but she's not looking like the Ranger yet, but she will. Um, I have installed the rear legs because <clears throat> there's no way around that really, you have to. But now be careful because everything underneath is completely flimsy. And uh, <clears throat> these will snap on you in, in, in a heartbeat. So you're going to have to be really careful. And even when this thing is, is finished, uh, standing it on its legs, um, it's just, it's just not, a, not a great design. They didn't really think that through, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so there it is. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be, uh, we're going to be, pre we're going to prepare to um, actually uh, start the, the painting process, which is a lot of fun. Now, as you can see here from uh, the painting template, that uh, they've given us uh, a really nice um, sort of, uh, this is what I really appreciate about Mobius models now, they're, they're giving you these painting guides and in fact, if you don't have the Aztec dummy masks, they even give you um, some templates to use for masking. And a lot of hobbyists like to mask it themselves, and they feel it's it's part of the uh, the, the fun of hobbying. And I, I I don't disagree with them, to be honest with you. But if you can afford the masks, uh, or at some point uh, get yourself a cutter, vinyl cutters are not expensive and uh, start to figure this out for yourself, then um, go for it because uh, masking is, it, it can be really helpful, especially with a lot of these complicated shapes. So uh, the Aztec dummy masks uh, are here. Now there are two versions of the mask. There's the original mask set and um, <coughs> that uh, was intended for the model as it came out of the box uh, without uh, touching the windows. It assumed you were just going to literally paint the windows gloss black and, and mask it this way. And then he um, 
realized that uh, the photo etch was a, a slightly different size and so he's added to the to the set this smaller uh, um, the smaller set of masks and they will sit in the windows quite nicely and mask those off for you. Um, now what we want to do obviously is is we want to protect um, I hope that's a bit of schmutz. No, I've got a little touch up there. That's okay. I'll be very careful. But we, we, we've got to prevent, preserve these frames, um, the photo etch frames, because they've got that beautiful detail on them, that raised detail, and that, that, that's going to make all the difference in the world. And so um, <clears throat> we've got the masks to do it. And then, obviously, when we uh, start the painting process, what tends to happen with these masks is as they get heavier paint residual on them, they will start to buckle. So um, I selfishly have gotten myself two sets of the masks. Uh, if you don't want to do that, and I completely understand why you would not want to do that, uh, it's a lot of money. Um, you you can uh, you you can in fact uh, sort of copy these shapes and try to get yourself some some masking tape masks because y you probably more than likely are going to need two sets. But anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. Here we are, um, and um, I'm um, I'm very very happy with where we are. Uh, so I'm going to start the masking process and slowly get some white paint on this and that will be the next step. They're very easy to follow. Uh, Lou's instructions are terrific. He's built this kit several times himself so he's no stranger to it and he'll take you, take you through it step by step. And then uh, once we've got uh, the, 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 a coat of paint on this it's really going to start to look like the Ranger and then we can start talking about uh, how we get this to uh, to start to look weathered and, 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 and aged. It's going to take a little bit, but it's going to be worth it. And uh, I think we're going to really like the results. So that's the next step. Uh, I'm going to start masking up and getting some white paint on this. So the next time you see this, um, we, we, will, we will have our first coat of white on it. And then we can start talking about strategy for how you um, age it and weather it. Okay, so uh, again, through the magic of uh, being able to pause and move forward, that's what we'll do now. And um, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so she's been masked off. And um, now we're going to give her a coat of white. This will be the, uh, the the first the first layer. Okay, we are now at a, a kind of a, a cool stage in the build. And let me tell you what I've done so far. And uh, this is not complicated, so don't feel like you've missed out on anything because you haven't. As we know, I had sprayed the entire kit with uh, a black. Uh, now what I did was I used a Humbrol uh, black matte spray. That was basically a primer coat, but I also use it as my finishing coat as well. As long as it is, I mean, it's paint, right? As long as it's the right color and you can set it, you're going to be fine. And then the next thing I did was, was I put all of the masks on, the Aztec dummy masks. Now, if you follow Lou's instructions, you'll notice that he's got great masks for the windows and he's got some really good masks for some of the very complicated compound curves. But he doesn't give you all of the masks, and that's where basking tape comes in. And so I've used some um, uh, drafting masking tape. I like to use this because I get uh, a, a good result with it, tight lines, and um, its tack is not as strong. If you look for drafting masking tape, uh, only use this for your really sharp lines because uh, it's expensive, but it goes a long way. And 
So I masked everything up per the, the, the instructions and I am following the paint guide that comes with your model. And there it is. And so I followed that to get me to where we are right now. Now, let me explain to you what I did because it's very important. I laid down a coat of white, plain white. I used the Humbrol Matte White in a spray can, dusted it over. I let it dry. After I'd let it dry, I came back and I used a Mecca color, uh, an off-white. Here it is. I'll show it to you on the fill cam so you can see it. It is uh, the Mecca color off white. Now you will need to uh, you will need to thin this if you're going to put it through your brush, and obviously you are. And so what I did was I thinned it with the here it is on the fill cam. A little bit of thinner, and you can also use a little bit of flow improver if you want to do that as well. Um, Depends on where you live, guys. Acrylic paints frustrate a lot of people, including myself. They will dry very, very fast in your gun. And so you do have to be very, very careful. And any kind of thinner will uh, only make it um, dry that much faster. But if you lose just a speck of flow improver, I find that you get a lot more time on your brush. But the secret to that is, is don't put a lot in your brush, guys. Don't fill your brush up, your airbrush up, container up, all the way up to the top. Just put a few drops in and, and dust it and do it carefully. So, again, to repeat, matte white, then an aged white, and then I finished up with the Vallejo uh, 7 1.001 white. And I'll show you that. Here is that. Now, the reason why that is important is because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove all these masks, and we're going to get some. Have to, we're going to have to do some touching up. There'll be some lines that need to be uh, remasked and resharpened. That's normal. But the reason why we did the white off-white, aged white, and then white is because when we go to give this its finish, you're going to be getting a, a sponge. Now I use the Tamiya sponges. This is an 800 grit sponge. You can get all different versions of this, but the Tamiya sponges I, I happen to like because they come in larger sheets. You can cut them into small pieces. I take a little Sharpie and I write the grit number on the back and uh, you can wash them out and they last a, a while. But I want to show you uh, s something because it's a lot of fun. What you're going to do is you're going to carefully, you're going to carefully in one direction, you're going to rub the surface of your model. Now, as you do that, Something awesome is going to happen. Now you've got to be careful and take your time and go in one direction. But what you're going to do is, is you're, start, you're going to start getting some yellowing in the white. And I'm going to try and show you this on Philcam. I can, in fact. Um, here it is on Philcam. Do you see? I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to point to it. Look at the color change, guys. Do you see that? That is the beginning of your weathering process and it's going to create a really, really cool finish on this. And obviously washes are going to go on this and we'll talk about that. But I wanted to show you that before we remove the masking and uh, continue on. Now I do have a confession to make and that is, is lose masks as good as they are will lose their tack and sometimes will peel up on you. I get two sets. That's expensive. You may be able to do your own at home with a Portrait 3 Silhouette Cutter. It is MAC compatible. I happen to love that unit and I'm thinking very seriously about getting my own. Um, but you may have to be very careful with these masks because they're going to have to come up. 
to touch up around those windows and we're going to see where we've made mistakes and, and talk about how we're going to clean those mistakes up. But fear not, it's only paint, we can fix it. But um, until you get these masks off and take a look at what you've got, it's really difficult to know. So that's it for this episode. Uh, that's part three. That's an awful lot for us to, to get through. Take your time, let your kit dry, and uh, all will be well. So in part four, we will have removed all of the masking and uh, we will look at cleaning up uh, any of the lines and uh, we'll start to, to look at how we um, finish this, th this awesome model. So that's it for part three. I hope this was helpful. I hope you're enjoying the content. Please, if you're just coming through, like and subscribe to the channel. It's really good for my soul and it'll, you'll feel good about doing it. <laughs> anyway, take care of yourself, guys. Be well, be safe, build something, and I'll see you in part four of Build the Interstellar Ranger. Take care, everybody.